Habit number four, I'm, I gotta move fast. Save money wisely. We have a great church that would take a Sunday to teach you this. First, remember God is your source. Second, make honest money. Third, honor God first. Fourth, save some of that money. Now, I don't know if you looked at the list of what I just gave you, but don't sleep on this. First, you do what? Remember God's your source. Second, you make honest money. Third, you honor God. Watch this. Fourth, you save some of it. Some of y'all still missed it. God teaches us that before you pay your bills, you pay yourself. You should have clapped right there. Your mama didn't tell you that. Your daddy didn't tell you that. That's why your finances are jacked up because God's order is not an order in your life. First, you take care of God. Then God says, pay yourself something. You shouldn't work a 40, 50, 60 hour a week job and not put something back for yourself. Tell my well, pastor, I got to pay the creditor. The creditor ain't going nowhere. I'm not talking about neglecting your responsibility, but if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of those that depend on you? And some of you have never heard this. Every paycheck you get, you should put a portion aside called saving that. You ought to clap. I'm preaching on a whole nother level today. What do I do? Pay God first, pay myself second, pay my bills third. This is, this is the biblical order from God. Let me say it again because some of y'all looking like a deer in headlights. Pay God first. Say pay God first. Pay myself second. Pay my bills third. Many of you pay your bills first, pay yourself second, and if God get anything, he get what's left. And you wonder why you stay in the hole. Now for every one of you to think you're smart, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Did you know that God says your IQ is measured by your savings account? <laughs> I asked you a question. Did you know did you know that God says your IQ is measured by your savings account? Don't, don't, don't fall where you're at. Did you know that? 99% of the people in the world don't know that. Now, I'm going to show you it in the Bible for every one of you to think I make up stuff. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Proverbs 21 and 20 said this right here. The wise... Smart, intelligent people. The wise man saves for the future. But the foolish man spends whatever he gets. So the question is, are you wise or are you foolish? I don't want to hear what that mouth do. I want to see what that savings account do. Because hmm. nobody has perfected the art of financial imagery like us. We can look like a million and ain't got a dollar. I'm not going to give him any clap today. That's all right. I, I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate, I appreciate the clap donation player because it's hard out here for a pastor. We spend more time and more energy looking like we have than doing what it takes to have and maybe looking a little rough for a season. Maybe looking a little raggedy for a season. Maybe driving a car that you're not proud of, but it gets you from A to B because you got a master plan and you ain't trying to spend all your money on something that impresses people, but it don't bless your life. God says, I can tell how smart you are by how much money you saved for the future. Most people don't know this in the Bible. Wise people save for the future. Fools spend whatever they get. The average Japanese citizen saves 25%. I'm trying to help y'all, Freedom Church. The average Japanese individual saves 25% of their income. I should hear more than what I'm hearing. The average Japanese people save 25% of their 
of their income. And they live off of 75%. Unless you're talking about Japanese people as a culture. Are they doing all right? Don't you hate on the Japanese people? <laughs> the average European saves 15% of their income. The average black person. The average black person does not save at all. in the books. The average black person saves zero. <sighs> percent. And we always talk about what somebody has done to us. This is why, this is why some black people don't like me. Because <laughs> I don't jump on that bandwagon that blames everybody for our situation. If you can sell dope, you can be a businessman and sell an honest product. If you can be a hoe on a corner selling your body, it's so quiet in here tonight. You can find some Mary Kay products and sell them legitimately. You don't have an education, they will sell soap, a bucket, and a sponge to anybody that want to make an honest living. You can get a lawnmower from the pawn shop. Ain't gonna be no riding. Some of y'all trying to come up too fast. Now, if I can do it at 13, what's your excuse for being poor? Can I go deeper? What you gotta learn how to do is when you get an increase, don't raise your standard of living. Quit trying to ball out. You're going to mess around and fall out. <laughs> Quit trying to impress everybody. You can't grow if you spend everything you get. And sometimes you got to go through a season where you just look bad. I'm preaching to somebody right now. You got to go through a season where you're going to have to look bad. Your car gonna look bad, your house gonna look bad, your clothes gonna look bad. But when you got a plan, I can look bad for a season. Cause when you get yourself together, then you ain't gotta look bad never again. Why? Because you are understanding the habits that are causing you to go deeper and deeper in the hole. Ecclesiastes 11 and two, I know I'm giving y'all a lot of scripture, but some of y'all need a lot of scripture. Invest what you have. Did you know God expects for every believer to be an investor? I'm preaching. I hope, you, I hope you're smart enough to reach up. And, God expects every believer to be an investor. But he don't want us to invest in one thing. God says invest in several different businesses because you don't know what disasters might happen. And what's happening, y'all don't understand, business opportunities are all around us. But you got the crowd mentality and you can't see it. When you see these people in the church that can cook cakes, cook soul food, and they cook, I mean, they, they, they got an anointing to cook. Why aren't we investing in them, helping them get on their feet, See, I ain't going to get. Okay. If you do anything in finances, they call this multiple streams of income. But the reason I've been able to do all right in life is because I have multiple streams of income. It's quieter than now. What's the multiple streams? Well, started a long time ago graphic designing. All the artwork you see for our church, flyers and stuff you see on Facebook, I designed that. Been designing for almost 20 some years. Got to the place now that I can be picky about my clientele. 
When I first started as a graphic designer, I would design for anybody that had money. But I found out all money ain't good money. And some folks ain't worth the headache. So when I grew my business, I started shuttling my lower tier graphic design customers <laughs> to a local graphic design artist who does what I do. Not on my level, but he do all right. Started shuttling them to him, increasing his business, and my higher tier customers I cater to because they understand the value of what I produce. So they're willing to pay more than those that just want anything that'll do. Motivational speaking. Get paid for that. Go to places and speak for 15, 20, 30 minutes. The, the lowest I make is $250. That's the lowest I make. And I'm not bragging, I'm just trying to show you if old country boy from Dooley County can do it. With no college degree, only in high school diploma. See, I'm gonna kill all your excuses in here today. Determination. The most I've ever made was $1,000 for speaking 15 minutes. Look at, look at, look at. See the ones they gonna clap, you see them, man? What is that? Multiple streams of income. I also do life coaching now. One-on-ones with people. Getting ready to do video life coaching. Where I ain't got to leave my house. Sit up with my feet kicked up. And coach people via video stream. Y'all ain't ready. There's some hate in this house today. Somebody say multiple streams can build my dreams. Major killer, your job ain't gonna never pay you enough. You keep punching that clock thinking that's how you're gonna make it. Never gonna pay you enough. And I know you hoping to win the lottery. But you better have a backup plan. Most of you have so many gifts and talents that you're not using right now because you put all your eggs in one basket. The Bible said, Invest what you have. In other words, don't wait till you get more. Invest what you have in different businesses because you never know when disaster might hit. Proverbs 13 and 11, maybe you can embrace this. Money that comes easily disappears quickly. I should have heard amen somewhere. But money that is gathered little by little, it'll do what? 